Black Adam has been in development for more than a decade. Few movies take a time this long in coming to the big screen. Finally, Black Adam is coming to theaters on October 21st. So is this movie worth this long wait? Does it deliver or does it disappoint? Is it the savior of the DCEU or its end? You will soon find out in my review for Black Adam. Before we begin, let me remind you to please hit the subscribe button because a lot of other early reviews are coming up including Enola Holmes 2, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, The White Lotus Season 2, etc etc. Now let us start with the review. As we are all aware, Black Adam is being played by the most popular movie star in the world, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yes, this version of Black Adam does not look exactly like the comic book version and even I wanted those pointed ears and that haircut but to be honest, it would never have looked good on The Rock. For that, they should have cast a completely different actor but this movie is all about Dwayne Johnson. It is his passion project. So let us all just calm down and accept what we got. Even though this look isn't comic accurate, I think Dwayne Johnson pulls it off wonderfully. It is hard to imagine any other actor in this role. He is electrifying on every level. I absolutely love his performance here. Not only is he acting like a brutal force of nature, but he also handles all the sentimental scenes very well. I would say that this is, is his best performance to date as an actor and the best character that he has ever portrayed. Well, we also have a lot of other actors in here. Moving on to the Justice Society, everyone was really buzzing about Dr. Fate and the other members rarely got any attention. I think the buzz was right, Dr. Fate is amazing here, especially the action scenes of Dr. Fate do the part. Pierce Brosnan is okay, I mean he does not bring anything new to the table, he does his part. But seeing Dr. Fate in a live action movie doing all his magic tricks was really awesome. Aldous Hodge's Hawkman was great too. Again, just during action scenes though, but man that costume is super cool. Hawkman really does have the best costume in the film and probably in the entire DC Extended Universe, right alongside Batflex's metal armor in Batman v Superman. Just like Pierce Brosnan, Aldous Hodge does not bring anything new to the table. However, the interactions between Aldous Hodge and Pierce Brosnan on screen were really charming. My favorite, however, was Quintessa Swindell as Cyclone. Not only does she have really cool powers, but she handles the serious and conversational scenes very well. So unlike her other JSA counterpart, she does bring some acting charisma to the table. Noah Centineo as Atom Smasher was my least favorite, however he was still pretty good. It just doesn't feel like he makes the role his own. I can easily imagine some other actor playing that character unlike the other actors here. Moving on to the most essential aspect of a film, the plot and the writing. I would say that the dialogues here are mediocre, I don't think there was a single dialogue here that got me goosebumps. There was some unnecessary humor thrown in there too which I did not like. The premise reads that after nearly 5000 years of imprisonment, Black Adam, an anti-hero from the ancient city of Kandak, is unleashed into the modern times. His brute tactics and way of justice attract the attention of the Justice Society of America who tries to stop his rampage. Teach him how to be a hero more than a villain and must team up to stop a force more powerful than Adam himself. And yes, they are talking about Sabak, who is kinda supposed to be the villain here but oh boy, is he a forgettable villain. The movie never revolves around Sabak, it is all about Black Adam and the Justice Society but it feels like they needed a character for them to fight at the end and they just picked Sabak. So yeah, I would say I did not care for Sabak at all, he's barely in the film. And the plot is simple, something bad happens with that Adam all those years ago, now he's back again with into the modern world, wanting to be a villain and the JSA expects him to be a hero, he ends up being an anti-hero. Nothing special, just popcorn flick stuff. Yes, there is, this is a total popcorn movie all over. It is meant to entertain you by its epic scale and it successfully does their job. However, if you go and pick every detail and pay attention to its writing, you will definitely find problems over there. The Rock promised epic action scenes. So does this movie deliver on that front? 
Black Adam has the best action scenes for a superhero movie since Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. But the movies that we got in between really did not have amazing action scenes. I mean, surely we got the Batman, but those action scenes are way too different than the ones in general superhero movies. Comparing it to DCEU standards, Black Adam sure manages to have awesome, if not the best action scenes of the franchise. I would say that Man of Steel, Aquaman, and Zack Snyder's Justice League had better action scenes than this. They promised us Man of Steel level action. I would say that this is just way different. Man of Steel's action sequence is focused on the massive destruction. The action here is more similar to Aquaman than Man of Steel. It is epic in scale and has a lot of those amazing epic goofy scenes like Aquaman. Black Adam has quite a few notable action scenes but there are two huge action set pieces in here both equally amazing. It has already been teased in the trailers about Black Adam vs the Justice Society. It was incredible and my favorite too. All the members of the Justice Society fighting Black Adam with a cool set of different superpowers. What else do we need? But then there is the third act which is absolutely mind blowing. It goes more epic in scale than the other action scenes here and also big on destruction. So yes, this movie has amazing action scenes, probably the best I have seen this year and I don't think any upcoming movies could beat, at, beat this at that part. This movie has an awful lot of VFX in there. Obviously, they need VFX for all the superpowers. They ain't gonna launch lightning or the rock or force Pierce Brosnan to be a magician. But even Dr. Fate's costume and Hawkman's helmet are purely VFX. I mean, I would have appreciated at least those things being real. However, the quality of the visual effects here is wonderful. Easily the best VFX for a superhero movie in 2022. Yes, even better than Multiverse of Madness. As we all know, DCEU is not in a good shape. I mean, DCEU has certainly given us good movies, but we can surely question its existence in the cinematic universe. Yes, Black Adam does have a few easter eggs and it also features Amanda Waller for connecting bridges, but people can't expect it to be the savior of the DCEU. It is just another chapter in the DCEU, just like the Suicide Squad or Aquaman. It does have a few tie-ins with some other films in the franchise and it also teases what we could see in the future. But it's not a mythology episode that will have huge consequences on the future. Future. And people can't also expect it to be the end of the DCEU because it is way too far from a bad movie. The upcoming Flash movie should really have the question mark of being savior or end of the DCEU, not Black Adam. Black Adam just proves that DCEU continues to deliver on decent flicks post the Justice League massacre back in 2017. However, Black Adam is surely cooking something for the future and fans need to go and watch this film for that recipe to come to life or else it will be thrown down the trash if this is not successful and DCEU fans would have to go through the same old frustration of an unplanned DCEU all over again. Black Adam is far from a perfect film but if you are looking for popcorn entertainment this is the perfect film for you. Heck, it is the perfect popcorn entertainment in the entirety of 2022. Is it worth the wait? I cannot answer that. Depends on how much hyped you were and what were your expectations. I was going in with mediocre expectations and quite a good amount of hype and I came out with a smile on my face even though I did have considerable uh, problems with the film. I would like to give it a 7.7 .7 out of 10. So go grab your movie tickets dude because we haven't got a 4 quadrant blockbuster since Star Love and Thunder and this is a perfect film to enjoy with friends and family but not with critical cinephiles. So that was my review for Black Adam, share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you excited for Black Adam or not? So that's it for the day, thanks to watch, like, share and subscribe Film Villa.